thank you all for coming. My name is Colin Shea, or as a college professor once called me, Colin Shea. So everyone you remember, you're more than welcome to call, answer to both, here on behalf of the St. Tammany Parish Chamber. Part of our mission is to educate voters before they head to the polls, and we do thank you guys for coming tonight. Tonight is, tonight's event is free thanks to the Chamber Pack. They sponsored all the costs, including the photography by Bill Yacht Photography. That being said, if you would like, the, the form is being recorded, and if you would like a to be notified when uh, the email goes out letting you know when it's posted on YouTube, let us know. You may have already registered, but if not, there is a sign-up sheet on the registration table. We also have some save the dates and some chamber information for those that are interested also at the, the table. Um, early voting starts this Saturday, the 12th, and it runs through next Saturday, the 19th, with election day being March 26th. One order of housekeeping we'd like to talk about from the chamber is that we are not leaving Slidell. We had a couple of questions about that due to our office moving but our office is only moving to the Towers building. And we are hoping that that will provide us with a better um, meeting space and we look forward to serving the citizens of Slidell. We are one chamber now and we certainly think that this move to Towers building will allow us to better serve the East. So without further ado, I will step aside and leave it to our moderator this evening, Mr. Andy. And I'm afraid to say his last name, I may mispronounce it. So, can you let? Same one. He's, he's making sure it's that Andy Canulet. He took the pause there. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We're going to start with the candidates for council at large and then move on to police chief. The candidates will start with one-minute opening remarks. They will speak in alphabetical order. We then move on to our five main questions for the candidates to answer. For each question, we will rotate to have a different starter for each question, and each candidate will have two minutes to answer. Thank you, Mr. Canulet. Uh, most of you know me. I'm, I'm Bill Borchert, and I want to thank the Chamber for hosting this uh, forum this evening. This is the only forum that has every candidate uh, at least getting an opportunity to speak. So I thank you that even though I think this is our ninth one of this election cycle, uh, this is the first one where we've had everybody. A little short bio about myself, uh, my beautiful wife, Lauren, I married 22 years ago. We both grew up in Slidell. Uh, we're both very active uh, for many years with local charities, community service projects, and, and public service. Uh, following Hurricane Katrina, I coordinated and housed over 2,000 volunteers to help rebuild our local community, and, uh, and as well as New Orleans, the Lower Ninth Ward, and, and areas like that. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm a, uh, one of the leaders in a volunteer disaster relief feeding ministry. Uh, we, we provide hot meals following hurricanes uh, and have since the 2016 flood in Denham Springs. We, uh, we've provided over 75,000 hot meals since then. Thank you. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Jeff Burgoyne and I want to uh, introduce myself and thank you for letting me come talk to you all today. I've been, uh, I've been an educator for a lot of years. 30 years and my wife as well right from Slidell and um, and I decided a, a while ago that I need to start looking at the city a little bit closer and get into the city council and and see what's going on and try to um, try to bring some new energy to the council and that's why I'm running today to try to to try to um, to try to re-energize and keep the city moving forward. The mayor's done a great job in the council, you know, starting, but I wanna see a lot more for Slidell. I have big vision for it. I think um, I've proven that through all my years of, of education and, and training our youth here in Slidell. And it's time to move to the city council and see what I can um, bring to the city. And I think it's energy and passion and um, just overall focus to keep the city moving in a positive direction. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Chamber. My name is Glenn Pishaw. I'm a 49-year-old God-fearing Slidell native. I'll be married 20 years this coming May. I'm a proud father of five, grandfather of one, with a new grandson coming in June. I went through the public school system here in town. 
Went on to LSU, graduated in 1996 with a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology and Chemistry. Since then, I've built a pretty strong and successful career in the Louisiana chemicals industry. I've served this community for nearly 13 years. And in that 13 years, I've gained the right experience, I've gained the right knowledge of this town, and I've built the right relationships to be able to get things done for the people of Slidell. I'm running for several reasons, but primarily because number one, I enjoy public service, and number two, you, the taxpaying citizen, deserves uh, an experienced and personable servant who knows how to get things moving in this town. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to individual questions, and each candidate is, is going to have two minutes to answer, and we're going to start with uh, Councilman Borchard. What is your top priority for Slidell, and how would you accomplish the goal? Well, my top priority for Slidell is, is kind of a twofold. Number one, we have to do something about storm protection and, and drainage issues. They're kind of, they're, they're not the same, but they cause the same problems. And so we, we have to look at working with our state and federal partners to uh, find the funding to, to help continue to, to uh, finish the levy that's needed for the storm protection requirement. And then also work with our state uh, and federal uh, partners to, to come up with solutions to our, to our drainage problems relative to, to rain. Uh, everybody knows our streets flood every time we get a rain, and so we, we definitely need to, uh, to do that. Uh, I've, I've been working uh, for probably the last five years on, on, a, on a pretty game-changing drainage project that would, that would help uh, alleviate nearly 200 homes from severe repetitive loss, uh, and it would also help to keep the uh, forward momentum uh, within the community and, and add to economic development. And so obviously one of the biggest problems that we have is that if you ask different people, I had a meeting the other day with somebody who has a business on Pontchartrain Drive and he told me that their health and their, their flood insurance cost is $15,000 a year. And I, and I don't know how you, I don't know how you, you know, I don't know how you manage to run a business and pay that kind of fee, but I've, but I've been told that they're as high as 25000 and we got to get that, we got to get that under control. Thanks. Mr. Burgoyne, same question. Yes, sir. You know, I want I want to just see an incredibly successful, excellent Slidell, you know. And and Bill hit on that point that drainage, flood protection are so important. You know, no, nobody can live here if your flood keep, your house keeps getting flooded and the insurance costs are outrageous. And we have to incrementally work through those problems. You know, we have to look at neighborhoods that are flooding and increase the, the size of the piping and do a lot of work to make that happen, but it's expensive. And it's past our budget, you know. We need to be seeking federal funds, and I'm sure the council's doing that. I want to continue that. Um, I want to seek flood protection for Sandell, hurricane protection. You know, the next big storm that comes up, we don't need anything like that in Slidell. And we need some protection out there. It costs a lot of money, though, so it's going to take a lot of research, a lot of grants, a lot of energy to get those things done. Um, you know, safety is so important. Safety. We, we have to have a strong police force, which we currently do. The, the chief of police is doing a great job. And I want to continue that with equipment and funding and staffing and training, all those things that are so important to have a strong, excellent police force. Um, and I'm just looking to protect our people. I want to bring that to us at all aspects of our lives. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Burgoyne. Um, Mr. Pichon, same question. Thank you. The number one top priority for me, and it should be for everybody in this city, is flood protection. And that that will consist of a, a, le a levy ring around the city. Now, the Army Corps has laid out a, a plan, um, and that plan is very expensive, $1.5 billion with a 10-year time frame for completion. But until we have that levy ring, uh, the lack of flood protection, it really impacts negatively every other aspect of Slido that we enjoy, the, the public safety, the economic development, it just stymies growth any, any, all across the board. So flood protection is number one. Uh, 
a close second and tied to that is infrastructure improvements. And right now we're currently investing about 10 to $12 million in our infrastructure. We're tying together two, two water systems to make those systems more efficient. And um, we're, we're digging out a new well in the city to provide better uh, water for folks in that area around Fremont Town Center. And we're also gonna try to uh, bring in some people into the city through annexation with that project. And we're also investing $3 million in a, a reservoir tank in the city to help get water off the streets quickly. So those two issues are, those two things are the top priorities. And the way I would go about doing that is number one, um, put together, draft a resolution uh, for the council and the mayor to get on the same page and then pass that resolution around the parish government, state government, and really get everybody on the same page. It's got to take a concerted effort because it's a federal project. $1.5 billion is nothing that we can even come close, not even in matching funds. So uh, a resolution, get the political support behind it at every level of government from local, parish, state, and then get the ball rolling on that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to question number two, and we're going to start with Mr. Burgoyne. What is your plan to help grow Slidell? Look, we sure don't want to grow past our, our limits and turn our beautiful little city into some crazy metropolis. So we've got to be real careful with growing Slidell. You know, we've got to be more careful than the parish has been recently, adding subdivisions just over subdivisions and not worried about drainage and traffic congestion and all these things that we're all concerned about. They seem to do it uh, haphazardly and uh, without our input, it seems. But um, we gotta be real careful. Now, I love a little bit of growth. I love business growth. I love what we're seeing out here with Amazon coming into Slidell. Well, that's 400 new jobs. That's 400 families. They have to live somewhere wonderful and they've gotta send their kids to our schools and, and use our restaurants and, and we have to be able to be able to do that in a in a good controlled way. We don't want to be sitting in traffic for an hour on gauze because the, there's too many people. So we have to be real concerned about the growth, but we do have to grow in a very smart, smart way. Thank you. Uh, I pride myself in, in engaging the public, and that's a, a major part of my job. In fact, that's the most important part of my job. And, and in those discussions with the public, the, the people have, have said that they don't want um, buildings taller than pine trees, we don't want any chemical plants on our bayous, and we don't want any casinos in our backyards. We want growth, we want responsible growth. And we have a lot to offer as far as attracting uh, business to the city and smart businesses. We have a very safe community, we have a, a, a ready workforce, which uh, under the previous administration, I worked with the LA Workforce Commission to establish a job fair in the city, and now that's a city-sponsored event. So they have a ready workforce. Uh, but ultimately, I think we need to look at how do we keep our talented people here, specifically our children, because St. Tammany Parish has really one of the greatest school systems, not only in the state, but in the country. And we're, we're graduating children, and we're sending them off to college, and they're Georgia and Alabama and all these states around us, they're taking our talented people. And those, our, our children are enriching the cultures and economies of our, of our surrounding states. So we have to look at a university setting of some type to try to keep our educated people here. And I think that's how we ultimately grow Slide L generations down the line because it, all it takes is one idea from one, one student. And, and they say, well, I want to start a business here. And when they start that business, that business could grow. And then we have a, 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 a very strong economy, a diversified economy that's not so reliant on sales tax. So there are some things we could do, but right now, what we're doing in-house is, 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 is trying to be more business friendly uh, to, to grow and also to, to attract the right business. So there's some things we could do and I'm very optimistic about our future. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Borch. Thank you, sir. You know, everybody throws out words like smart growth and economic development. And, and as, a, as a business owner, uh, I understand what those terms mean. Uh, I've had the opportunity on Friday to have to decide whether to pay the light bill, payroll taxes, or uh, you know, employee pay. And, and so smart growth is one of those things that, that gets thrown around. Uh, but the reality is, is, it, is that Slidell doesn't have a whole lot of land for, for 
much much else uh, you know n new neighborhoods and those kind of things that's in the parish around us um, one of the things that we we need to look at and mayor cromer's done a great job in in, in reaching out to what we call uh, smart clean manufacturing uh, we have we have a couple of different businesses that have that have come to Slidell and, and made it made it home um, it was mentioned that Slidell is a great place for distribution Amazon uh, Dana manufacturing is another one um, several years ago uh, I, I met a company in at one of the National League of Cities called retail strategies and they are they are a national organization that goes out and actually recruits businesses to backfill empty building spaces we um every time we're on the campaign trail somebody says well, why don't you get somebody to backfill that target building or that mall or this or that instead of building a new facility right next to it and that's what retail strategies does for us and we we brought them on as a partner and they've done an outstanding job they've made a difference with chick-fil-a if you saw the recent uh pizza hut that got torn down that's all part of the, the economic, economic development and smart growth taking place in Slidell. And I'm glad to be a part of that. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Let's move on to question three. And this will be started by Councilman P. Sean. Do you feel Slidell is overtaxing residents since there is an operating surplus? And what do you suggest the city does moving forward with the issue? Well, personally, I, I, I hate taxes. Not all, I mean, obviously not all taxes, but I feel like we are a little burdened. But if you look at the cause of the, the surplus, it's because of the pandemic. It's directly related to the pandemic. I mean, people were home here spending money. They were doing projects around the house. I actually had to, had to take a business trip to Nashville during the pandemic, and there was only like three people in a hotel. So people were... were they were, they were out there at their residences spending money in our own hometown. So that's where we get the surplus from. But I feel like ultimately there's a lot of waste in the parish as a whole. You know, I feel like if we, if we had a unified government, I'm a big proponent of this and always talk about it, a unified government in this, in this parish I think would make uh, not only streamline government, but just make it more um, uh, tax effective, more effective. Uh, for our residents because everybody's paying for two council people at least two uh, parish and city so um, just streamlining government uh, is the first thing but I don't feel like we're we're overtaxing our residents uh, there's some things that we can do um, to, to make that money work harder for our, our uh, tax paying citizens but I feel like we're we're right where we need to be right now thank you thank you <laughs> this thank you um, you know, part of the part of the to answer your question, we're all overtaxed. Uh, but the reality is, is that is that in order for us to have a quality of life that we expect and deserve, it takes money. And so, um, from the standpoint of the city, when you pay when you pay your taxes, especially on your property taxes, the percentage that's the city is very small compared to the rest of it. Um, but I, and I say that part of the reason that we have a surplus every year, number one, is, as Councilman Pichon mentioned, the, um, the sales tax is up nearly 20% the last two years. And, and if, if, you would have, if you'd have been watching the budget two years ago when COVID hit, we, we cut the budget by 10% on sales tax, $2.2 $2 million, and actually had an additional nearly $2 million in, in uh, surplus. So it... it it, it's a high number, but I don't think it's a realistic or sustainable number. And I, I would suspect that next year the sales tax won't grow and may even decrease. And I say that because a large percentage of the surplus that we see in the city right now is attributed to the 60 vacancies that we have for employees. Because much like every other business, we can't fill every position that we have. And so, you know, if you if you just do some quick math, you have 60 employees with help with uh, salary benefits and and uh, and retirement. It it takes up quite a bit and uh, and eats up into some of that surplus that we see. So some of the numbers are not necessarily realistic. Uh, they're they're really more time sensitive to number one vacancies and number two uh, the COVID and the spending that came from the stimulus. Thank you. Mr. Burgoyne, same question. 
Wow, taxes. Look, nobody nobody likes taxes. I'm just a regular guy like you all, and, and I struggle to, to manage in life. Me and my wife, have, all our lives is just educators, you know, just getting on by, getting our kids through college, and, and life is expensive. And we have to, as city leaders, make sure that we, we manage our taxes at a level that, that is reasonable, very reasonable. Um, you know, if, if we have a big surplus, like currently, I think it's around $5 million. Well, that's a little excessive, but there's reasons behind that because of COVID, I understand. Um, we have to make sure that we control our spending in this city. You know, I want great services. I want drainage and flood protection and great police and wonderful roads and, and crosswalks across Front Street so I don't get run over trying to get over here from, from Heritage Park. But all those things cost a lot of money, you know, and you have to come to a, a good balance. And, and that is the key to this whole process. I think that we're probably about where we need to be currently. I sure wouldn't want to see any tax increases. Um, but hey, the Fremo Center out there is doing wonderfully. Lots of tax money coming into Slidell because of that. Well, that, that may be temporary. It might continue at that level. We'll just have to wait and see. And I'm sure that the analysts on the, that the city employs will figure that out for us. But um, generally, I want to see a good balance between government spending and government intake. And uh, that's my position on that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to question four, and that is... I think we've talked a little bit about this in, in question one when we talked about your top priority, but flooding and drainage are major problems in the city of Slidell uh, and elsewhere in the parish, as we know. What, what can you and the rest of the council do to help alleviate the problem for the citizens? And, and I, I think I might ad-lib a little bit here and say, can we talk maybe specifically about what can be done? Uh, I think everybody knows that it, it's an issue, and we did just all talk about that. So is there anything specific, perhaps, that could be done? for flooding and drainage. Uh, and we're going to start with uh, Councilman Porter. Yeah, obviously, you know, it seems like every forum we've gone to, the, the, the major question is, number one, drainage, and number two, crime. But but the reality is, is, that, is that the necessary fixes for what we need in Slide L, and, and for, for, for that matter, all along the Gulf Coast, is, is lots of time and lots of money. Uh, one of the big things that, that you know, we, we talked about, Councilman Pichon mentioned a $1.5 billion uh, levy protection system. Um, I didn't do any quick math, but it seems like it would only take the city of slide out about 400 years of not spending money on anything else of the $40 million in our budget to get close to that. Uh, and so the reality is, is that, is that what we need to do is, and, and we've done it, is build relationships with parish, state, and federal uh, stakeholders, as well as the elected officials, to get things done. Um, it's taken us probably since the 70s to get to the point where we even have a plan now that the Army Corps is actually looking at. And so a lot of that comes down to the leadership that we have and the leadership that will continue to move that ball forward and get things done for the city. Um, one of the things that, that I'm proud of, and if you read the uh, flyer that I have, um, I was on the council uh, when we set aside $250,000 to go seek FEMA uh, infrastructure improvements, and, and that $250,000 turned into $70 million worth of streets and drainage projects. Um, it, was a, it was a gamble. It was a calculated gamble in that um, we were told that Bay St. Louis got it, New Orleans got it, and everybody else. And so we, we took the chances of council in the previous administration and, and brought in that needed improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burgoyne. Yeah, drainage. Wow, I hate, to, uh, I hate to see my neighborhoods flood every single year, you know, and, and it costs so much money to fix that. But we need to be incremental in our spending, and we are, we have been, and we need to continue that. And when we have some extra money, we need to look at drainage projects around. You know, when you have a, a, a six or eight inch drainage pipe in the old parts of Slidell, some of the old parts where there weren't too many residents 
40, 50 years ago when they did that. Maybe they need to go to 15 or 25 or 30 inch pipes and carry more drainage away from the neighborhoods. We sure don't want to see that flooding. You know, um, I, I just look at everything that's going on in the city. For instance, the, the St. Tammany Trace ends at Slidell. It doesn't come into Slidell. It goes through Covington, Abita, Mandeville, stops at the, at the gates of Slidell. And it's been like that for 10 or 15 years. I remember taking my kids in my old truck over there to, to the North Shore Mall to catch the trace and start riding toward Lacombe. And it hasn't improved. And I want to make sure that kind of stuff happens. I want, and, and you know, you got you to gotta cross state highways. You got to deal with the state people and the federal people. And, and those are the things you got to do. You just got to do it. And you got to have the energy and you got to keep after that all the time, time after time. And, um, and those are the kind of things you have to do in general, you know? There's no, there's no magic pill to this thing. It's gonna be just a lot of work, a lot of energy, and a lot of money that has to go to this to keep our city safe from flooding and, and hurricanes and all those things. Thank you, Mr. Pichon. Thank you. As, as Councilman Borsher uh, said, we, we did invest, I think almost $100 million in infrastructure repair after Katrina. And the problem with that is you, we, we invested that money, but it's not insured money. So it's almost like driving a $100 million car off the lot with no insurance. So I'm gonna go back to the, to the levy ring, which, which, which would be the insurance for that investment. Another problem with that is that we, we replaced uh, damaged six inch pipes with new six inch pipes. So the city's more compact and dense, so we need um, bigger pipes. Fortunately for us, we have one of the best engineering departments in the, in the area. I mean, our engineering department, they're very proactive. So they've identified uh, projects all throughout the city. They've uh, done the groundwork studies on those projects and even some of the preliminary engineering. So when, when uh, money, like uh, the billions that are available with the bipartisan infrastructure law that was just recently passed, uh, we're gonna be in a prime position to capture some of that money. And some of that's gonna be matching funds. And, and like I said, we do have some surplus and I think we're gonna be in, in a really great position uh, like I said, to capture some of those funds and, and, and apply that money uh, to some of these projects that are already uh, in design, you know, as, as far as our engineering department. So I feel good about uh, where we're headed as far as uh, flood protection for the city. So for what we can do as a council is, is um, work with the engineering department and administration. And when, that, when they say, look, we need this amount of money to, to match this grant money, then we're going to be ready to make that, that vote. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are coming to the fifth and final question for each of you gentlemen, and it's a bit of a different question. And it is, what one question would you like to ask your opponents? Um, we're going to start with Mr. Burgoyne. Do you have a question that you might like to ask your opponents? Wow, that's a good one. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, look, I'd like to ask them about the trace, bottom line. That, that's a big thing for me is why that hadn't come into the Heritage Park why we haven't sent out railways, green spaces out from Heritage Park to the rest of the city. That's what we need. We need a good vision for Slidell. Why hasn't that happened and why isn't that on the table? Uh, under, the, under the previous administration, uh, the, the trace was uh, designed to go down, uh, well, through Carolyn Park down West Hall. And, and that was such a, um, a painful thing to to witness for the residents there because not one person who lived on West Hall or in that area was in favor of that project uh, going down West Hall, but it was the cheapest way to do it. And, and, and as Mr. Burgoyne alluded to, uh, in Slidell, we, we, we kind of, you know, we're at the bottom of the pole, totem pole when it comes down to things like that. So we, we have to, to make a stance uh, as a council and, and be strong and say, you know, we're not gonna accept stuff like that. We want things done the right way here just as they're done anywhere else in the parish. And, and I think if we make that strong stance, we'll, we'll, we'll get their attention and say, look, this thing need to go down, down the railroad, just like it does in, in Mandeville and Covington. So we, I personally took a stand against it, and uh, eventually it, it got redirected to where, where it should go, which is down the railroad, and that's in design, and uh, when the funding becomes available, that project will, will resume. So that, that's pretty much what we're all on the trace. Joe, you have a response? I think it's a good, good question. You know, um, my, 
my wife is an avid cyclist. She, she bicycles 300 miles in the month of June to raise money for children's cancer, and she rides her bike just about every day, at least two miles. So anyway, the, my, my wife has been on me for over 20 years to find out, even long before I got on the council, why the trace can't come into, into Slide L. Uh, you know, as, a, as an elected official and a steward of the taxpayer money, one of my big questions is, is that Covington, Mandeville, and Abita didn't have to pay any of the municipal money into the trace. Why does Slide L? But the reality is it's important enough to us that the city of Slidell has, has ponied up a little over $600,000, teamed with the parish to about a $1.4, $1.5 million. And now we have the trace in design, we have the trace funded, and it's not quite finished being designed, but the money is there, the design is underway, and, and I can tell you that it's, it's Mayor Cromer's des desire that the trace be finished, the only person I know that has more desire to get it done is my wife, and so the so the reality is is that it's it is a uh, it is a very important piece of the of the puzzle as far as Slido is concerned, but it but it has it has been funded, uh, it is coming up the railroad, and uh, and I can tell you that if Mr. Welburn was here and not in the skate park meeting tonight, he would tell you that some of the things that held up were were getting were getting property rights of way to bring the trace uh, in in this way and so so I, I'm excited to announce that the, that hopefully the trace will be coming sooner rather than later that we have all of the pegs in place and I'm hoping that that uh, that will come to fruition very very soon thanks good question too Jeff Mr. P. Sean it's your turn to ask a question of your opponents okay so I actually formulated uh, a question for each of for each of uh, my opponents, it's an A and B part, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So for uh, for for Councilman Borsch, uh you know as well as I do, this this job comes with uh, extreme highs and extreme lows, uh, extreme frustration, uh, extreme jubilation, and um, you know Monday we're burned at the stake. Um, Tuesday we're congratulated, Wednesday we're impaled, Thursday we're stoned. But you know, we, it's a part of the job we do what we have to do. But my question to you is what, what's what been your, your, your highest high um, in all of your years of service and also uh, what has frustrated you the most uh, in your years of service? You know, the highest high is, is obviously serving the people of Slidell and making a difference in the quality of life that we uh, that we have, that we deserve, and that uh, and that we require. Uh, one of the one of the things that I'm probably most proud of is the the marina project out there at Heritage Park. Um, I wrote the million and a half dollar federally awarded grant. Uh, we had almost two million dollars worth of necessary bulkhead repairs. And so by getting the federal grant, we got the necessary repairs to the sidewalk and bulkhead and, and essentially a free marina. And, uh, you know, my hope was is that we would have boaters from around the area and around the Gulf Coast come to Slide L, spend a weekend, uh, go to Palmetto's for dinner, go to Bruiser's for a drink, walk into Old Town and, and have fun and, and, and that kind of stuff. It, it does happen on occasion. Most of the time the boaters come um, during festivals and, and whatnot, but uh, but it's, it, it has been uh, it has been very good. My 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 probably my my biggest disappointment is is kind of a single but twofold answer. Um, number one, we'll see this election come and go at the end of this month, and if I were to guess, we will probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 20 percent turnout. And, the, and the, the, the big disappointment for me, or my big frustration is, is, that, is that that kind of tells us as elected officials that 80% of the people just really don't care. And so that for me is a, is a, is a frustration and kind of a, kind of a, if you want to call it a letdown, a letdown. And so I wish more people would get involved. I wish more people would do things to, uh, to you know, to, to better our community, but that would be it. Thanks. Thank you. And then part B for Mr. Burgoyne. Mr. Burgoyne, so in your current position as an administrator for Slide Ohio, High, uh, what skills have you have you developed that will carry over and help you to, to do a, a, a great job on the city council? Great, thanks. 
Yeah, so working with the youth of uh, youth of Slidell High put some years on me now. I'm really about 32. <laughs> I don't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 50, uh, 56 of all, uh, can't believe it. Um, but really, it's been a blessing, a real blessing to be able to work with the children of Slidell, has, of Slidell really. They come from all parts of Slidell and, and um, it, it's just been phenomenal to be able to interact with all the families. You know, it's just not the kid, it's the parents that want their child to do well and be successful and start businesses and go to college and go to the military and go to a trade school, become a great welder, whatever they want. You know, they have those opportunities here in their great school system of St. Tammany. And look, Salmon High is just as good, North Shore, Pope, they're all putting out great programs and great kids and we're so lucky for that. But what I've learned on the administrative side of it um, is that I'm, I'm, always, I'm always working on myself to be calm and collected at all times. Even, even when people get angry and get upset because their kid's not doing well or they've done something a little crazy, you know, they're all on edge. And, and my job is to stay calm and collected and dole out the correct punishments and answers and, and all of those things to guide the children to the right way and the good way. Um, and to explain things to people that they don't sometimes want to hear. So I think I've learned through all these years just to be a calm, collected individual that thinks clearly before he acts. Um, and I, I think that's probably the main thing. Thank you. Uh, same question for Councilman Borcher. Do you have uh, a question that you'd like to ask Mr. Burgoyne and Mr. Pichon? <laughs> You know, one of the questions on the questionnaire was, was, was if you could ask your opponent what the question would be, and, and I, I teased my wife and I said, should I ask them if they like the color of my eyes? But I'm not going to ask that question. Um, one of the things that's important to me is my faith, and, and as such, I was I'm fortunate enough to be one of the uh, individuals responsible for bringing the mayor, mayor's prayer breakfast to the city of Slidell. And because faith is important to me, I would, I would ask both of, of my uh, opponent candidates um, what's your favorite Bible verse wow thank you thank you look I love uh, I love Jesus love love God you know um, I was just at a wedding on Saturday and Corinthians Corinthians came up the love chapter and it was the same exact chapter that my wife and I um, chose as our verse, as our, our sort of mantra, um, 30 years ago, which is stunning. I still, you know, think it's just been a few years. All of a sudden, 30 years is creeping up on me. And we just looked at each other when they were reciting their, their vows and talking about love and, and um, all the great things that go with that up on, on the pulpit. And um, I think that's that's it for me right there. Thank you, Councilman. I have to say Galatians 6 to uh, share in each other's burdens. And I say that because I was mostly raised by my grandparents and they were devout Catholics and uh, my upbringing was very regimented and uh, everybody had a chore in a house and we learn, you know, we learn respect and responsibility. And we never had a whole lot, you know. Sometimes we had we had government cheese blocks in the fridge and stuff like that. But my my grandparents would say things like, you know, no matter how high or low you are, you can still give back. So I, I carry that with me throughout my life. And uh, in high school, I joined uh, Kiwanis Key Club, and I became a mentor. And since then, I've, I've mentored children my entire life, most of my adult life, and I still have three uh, mentees right now, seven, 17, and 11. And, um, you know, like I said, I just carried it with me my entire life. I was a, a hospice volunteer in Baton Rouge. I, I, I sat with, with um, people's loved ones to provide respite care. I volunteered at St. Vincent de Paul Homeless Shelter. So uh, it, it's been important to me, and that's how I approach this job. You know, I approach it the same way. Uh, the reward is not um, 
the victories you won't see on the front page of the newspaper. You won't see them on the nightly news, but the reward is in knowing that you, you've done some good and that you've help, helped uh, people, even if it's the smallest things, uh, but that you've done some good and you've helped people. And so I'd say Galatians 6 two. Thank you. Okay, I think that wraps up the individual questions. So we are going to allow each of the candidates to have a closing statement, one minute each, and we're going to start with Councilman Fishon. Thank you. Uh, so for me, the at-large seat has, has been all about building relationships, uh, strong relationships uh, across all levels of government to be able to get things done for, for the people of Slide Hill. Uh, our senators, our parish elected officials, uh, the mayor, administration, um, police chief, my peers on the council. I, I really have a, a fantastic working relationship with everybody. But, but I've always said the most important relationship for me, because I know what my job is, is with the people. Um, engaging the people, uh, earning the people's trust, uh, opening those lines of communication so that I can understand what the people want, uh, what they don't want, their concerns and issues. Because bottom line, if I don't know what the people want, I can't do my job. And my job is, is legally to uh, approve a budget that provides city services, public safety, and all those things, and also to support ordinances that protect our interests and protect and preserve our quality of life. So the people have spoken, and I've made a commitment um, to protect everything we love about Slidell, and, and, and if re-elected, I will continue my commitment to Slidell and make Slidell the, the best place to live and work on the North Shore. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Portrait. Thank you. Um, two minutes seems like a short time, but also a lifetime for you guys sitting out there. Um, I am going to start by saying that I'm the only candidate up here that has, that has received all four local endorsements, the Alliance for Good Government, the Chamber PAC, RPEC, and the GNO RPAC. Um, Councilman Pichon summed up pretty much well what it takes to be a public servant, building relationships, building relationships with state, federal, parish, uh, officials, stakeholders, and people that can, that can uh, get things done. Um, obviously working with the people is very important and, and understanding where people are and what they want to do. And I see that Jessica has given me the time card. Uh, it must be one minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm excited to, uh, to be here and I appreciate everybody showing up and I would, I would respectfully request your support and vote from everyone in here that can to reelect me as councilman at large, March 26th. Thank you. Look, I, uh, Slidell has been incredibly good to me and my family. We're, we're so blessed to have lived here, to raise our kids here. They all went through the public schools. Both of my boys are, are now off living their lives and they're both in the military, actually. And um, I'm so proud of them and, and nervous all the time, of course, as well, but we just love them and, and they're ready. We put it in God's hands and off they go. Um, but I want to give back to Slidell now. I've got time and energy, and, um, and I want to see Slidell just become the greatest place that anybody wants to live. And it's going to take a lot of energy and a lot of effort through all of the things that we've talked about tonight. You know, keeping a good, to make a good family friendly city, we've got to have a good, strong police force, fix our drainage problems take care of those issues, keeps our, keep our taxes reasonable so we're not driving people out of town. There's just so much for us to do, and I want to be the guy that does it. So, Jeff, we're going for City Council. Thank you. Okay, without further ado, I think we're going to jump right into the uh, Chief of Police candidate portion of our event, calling up uh, Police Chief Randy Fandle and Mr. Rhett Rodriguez. So we're going to start with opening statements, one minute each, and we'll do that alphabetically. So we'll start with Chief Ann. First, I'd like to thank you for inviting us here tonight. My name is Randy Fandle, and I'm a lifelong resident of Slotel and a fourth-generation Slotel native. I graduated from Slotel High. I've been married to Dania Fandle for 26 years. Dania's been a licensed social worker with the Department of Children and Family Services for 29 years, working with children that have been abused and neglected. We 
We have three children. Matthew is a trooper at Trubell. Mark served in the Marines doing embassy security and now nursing. He's in nursing school at Southeastern. And Mallory owns our own clinic working with autistic children. We have two grandchildren, Macy, age seven, and Wyatt, age three. I have over 40 years law enforcement experience working for the Slotto Police Department, Louisiana State Police, and over 25 years of management and supervision. I've successfully led the police department for the last five years, and I'm a proven leader with proven experience. Most importantly, I have the privilege of working with the best and most professional men and women in law enforcement in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Rodriguez, one minute. Thank you. Also, thank you for letting me be here. My name is Rep. Rodriguez, and I'm a candidate for Slido Chief of Police. I'm 41 years old, a lifelong resident of Slido. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Jennifer, and we just had a newborn baby girl after years of trying. I graduated from Salmon High School, class of 1998. I started with the Sheriff's Office at 20, 21 years old, and I have 19 years with the Sheriff's Office. In those 19 years, I have experience in corrections, communications, court security, search and rescue, criminal patrol, juvenile sex crimes, and civil division to where I reach sergeant. My platform is, is simple. I'm all about community relations and youth. I can see that she's probably about to wave the card on me, so I'll try to do, get to my platforms in a closing statement. Thank you. Okay. Question number one, and we're going to start with Chief Fandle. What is your top priority for the SPD and how would you accomplish the goal? Top priority is to keep enough men and women on the police department to protect public safety in this area. As everybody knows, we have a lot of criminals trying to infiltrate our city here in Florida. And they're coming from the north, south, east, west, every direction. We need to continue paying our policemen, keeping them some of the highest paid policemen in this, in this area, in this region, and we need to retain these policemen. This is one of the most important things that we have, have to do in Slidell. I continue to do that. We'll continue being some of the best trained policemen in this area. We have the Regional Training Academy here in this area. We teach 72 different agencies from all over this region, and that is the key to having a professional police department. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Besides public safety is drugs. It's, drugs are bad around here. Drugs are bad everywhere. One of my programs that I want to do, I can talk about it now, is the youth program in school. I want to utilize these school resource officers and start the D.A.R.E. program again, if possible. The D.A.R.E. program, if you watch the news, Covenant Police Department just recently started it back again and it will make a real big difference with not only children but adults. Children can make adults change. Adults can't make adults change. Thank you. Question number two and we're going to start with Mr. Rodriguez on this one. We're seeing increased crime coming from the surrounding areas of Slidell or areas surrounding Slidell. How do you plan to tackle it? Mr. Rodriguez. Um, I mean you attack proactive police work. I mean Utilize what you have. The equipment coming in, Chief Fandle said it before, they got body cameras coming in. That's going to make a big, huge difference. The Sheriff's Office has been having them probably close to two years now. As a supervisor in the Civil Division, I maintain that. I would have to go over that footage every time. If something was missing, we would have to discipline that officer. That is going to help the citizens and, and the officers that pertain to that. The key to public safety is proactive police work always. One of the things we do is one of the reasons I don't have electronic ticketing in Slotto. When the officers make a traffic stop, that is a huge key to keeping this area safe. Traffic stops, you can turn traffic stops into a criminal, a, a, a criminal arrest every day of the week. I don't want those guys using an electronic ticket book. I want them to get out there when they make a traffic stop. I don't care if it's for bad license plate, speeding. They need to make contact with their driver and have a conversation with the driver. They need to talk to the driver. You'd be surprised what you can learn while you're talking to somebody on the side of the road. So the key to that is talk to the people. And it starts with traffic enforcement. And you can make a lot of arrests. And you can continue keeping public safety 
a key in this area. We'll jump right into question number three, and Chief Fanda will start. A plan to attract and retain quality officers. We started last year to attract officers. We're, we're getting them from all over this area. We've, we've uh, hired officers from Jefferson Parish, St. Tammany Parish, Hammond Police Department, uh, several agencies around this area. Last year I worked with the city administration, the mayor and the city council, and we have one of the, we passed one of the most comprehensive pay plans that in the history of the Slotto Police Department. We've raised everybody's pay. We before I got here we were one of the lowest paid agencies in this area. We raised everybody's pay. Now we're one of the highest paid agencies in this area, in this region. So now we're being, we're able to hire these guys. We're able to retain these guys. So pay is an issue. I plan on continuing to work with the city council on that, and we're going to stay one of the highest paid agencies in this region. I absolutely agree with competitive pay. That's how you're going to get quality officers. But you also want officers that are tested for empathy, honesty, integrity, and that are trustworthy to give back to the community. That's what the community deserves. How have you or would you outfit officers with the most up-to-date equipment and training to protect citizens effectively? And would you request the city make improvements to the current police department building on Sergeant Alfred Drive? In reference to the building, I can honestly tell you, I, I would have to go in and e evaluate it myself. I don't know. I mean, I would then base a decision off of that, so on that aspect, I really can't. Um, technology, there's grants, just like they got the grants for the body cameras. They got body cameras out there. They have drones you can get grants for. They have new tasers you can get grants for. Body armor. That's how you would save the city money, is going to find these grants. Chief. Would you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, it, it, two parts. How have you or would you outfit officers with the most up-to-date equipment and training to protect citizens effectively? And would you request the city make improvements on the current police department building? We're currently using some of the most highly effective uh, tech technological equipment available to us. We've worked with Axon. We have the tasers needed. We have the body cameras coming in. The body cameras have been stuck on a ship somewhere off the west coast. But we have, we've implemented the pilot program. We've passed all that. We decided to go with the Axon cameras. We have policy written. Now we're all we're doing is waiting for the cameras. We have recently purchased some highly technical traffic cameras uh, in the area. We utilize those to find uh, criminals that we're looking for. We can not just license plates, but we can put other information in the program and, and locate vehicles that way. As far as the police department, I can tell you this. The police department was built in the early 60s. The jail was built in the early 60s. The jail is a cinder block cell. People laugh at me when I tell them, but it, you actually open the jail cells with a round brass key, a brass ring and it's skeleton keys on the ring, just like Andy Griffin uses. <laughs> the jail needs to be rebuilt. I'm gonna work with the city administration. I have four years left on this job. I plan on being here for four more years, and I'll work with this administration, and we're gonna get a new jail. We're gonna get a new police department. It's gonna, it's gonna take working with the parish also, and I plan on doing that. We now, we, we had a city court. Now we have an East St. Tammany court. The city police department is responsible for just the ninth ward. The East St. Tammany jail now is responsible for the East and ninth, East and eighth and ninth wards. So I want to work with the parish also. Maybe we can get the parish to pony up some money and build a jail out there on Brownswich Road. It's going to take meeting with the, the uh, mayor, the sheriff, the judge, and myself, and try to get that done. Thank you. Thank you. And the fifth and final question is the same uh, one that we asked the at-large council candidates. What one question would you like to ask your opponent? And Chief, you get to go first. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I understand this platform. I understand it fully. I don't have any questions for him. Thank you. Okay. I have one. 
Can you do an encore with the Slot OPD song? <laughs> that just ain't right. I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> Too good. I got to see that when this is over. Um, social media, all right? <laughs> Okay, uh, in conclusion, each of the candidates will have a closing statement of two minutes, and we're going to start with Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you. It has always been my dream to be Slido Police Chief. Ever since back where I can remember, I wanted to follow in my father's footsteps, who was Chief of Police of Slido. Um, unfortunately, you know, my dad would love to be here. His health's withering away. Um, people ask me why now. That's where I'm getting at. So why now? Why are you running now? Why not wait four years? And the reason is my dad. It's because I want him up there swearing me in. That's, that means a lot to me. Um, I believe with my experience in various departments and various divisions, I would be an asset to the already great Slotto Police Department. I humbly ask for your vote, and no matter what the election results are, I think you're going to get a great person there. Thank you. I'd like to say, too, just as Councilman Borshin said, I've got the endorsements from RPAC, the Chamber PAC, GNR PAC, and the Alliance for Good Government. I've been a successful leader for the Slotto Police Department for over five years now. I love my job. I still have work that I want to accomplish, which includes working with the city administration and city council, so we can be sure to remain the highest paid police department agent in the region. I love this city, and like I said before, I want to work with them to build that new jail, to build that, that new police department. Look at the fire department being built right across Caddy Corner from us. We got this beautiful diamond coming up Caddy Corner to us. And we have a police department that I can tell you now, there's no, there's, there's no architectural plans available that you can put your hands on to see how that police department's built. Originally it was, it had one floor to it and it had the second floor was a court courthouse. The courthouse has been changed about two or three times in the different offices. The detective's offices have been rebuilt two or three times. It's built like a stack of cards would be built. You move a wall, the whole thing's going to probably come down. But I want to continue working with this city and keep it the city that I love, keep public safety a priority, and continue keeping this city, city safe to be able to raise your children in and your child coming up, Red. <laughs> so I'm humbly asked for your vote, March 26th. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. And if I could add, um, thank you for your, uh, for your service. Thank you for the, uh, being on the line for us and, and protecting our community in both of your capacities. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk with the council district candidates. And each candidate is going to have two minutes to talk about themselves and their platform. We're going to start with the district A candidates, and we're going to be in alphabetical order. So that's going to be first, Mr. Tom Abney. So two minutes uh, to talk about your candidacy, and we'll start with Mr. Abney. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. First and foremost, God is the strength and the purpose in my life. If we could, let's have a moment of silence for the people of the Ukraine that's being brutally attacked by this Russian dictator right now. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> My name is Tom Abney. I'm a lifelong resident of Slido. Born and raised here, I remember when Gulls Road was a gravel road. That's hard to believe, isn't it? I've lived in District A for 27 years. My, uh, I went to Brock Elementary, Slido Junior High, and Slido High attended USL in Lafayette and Southeastern uh, Louisiana College in, in Hammond. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have over 40 years of community service in Slido through different organizations. Boys and Girls Club, SYFA, SBBA, 
community outreaches to my ch churches and organizations that have been on mission trips within the United States, but not out of the United States. <clears throat> I'm a retired school bus driver for 20, 20, 24 years, married, have three children and six grandchildren. I know I don't look old enough to have grandchildren, do I? <clears throat> I've worked on the board of directors with Pastor Eugene Wellington, handing out food and clothing to the needy as, as one of my services. I served on the board for almost 20 years with Pastor Eugene. I'm a member of Journey Fellowship Church. I will be your full-time councilman, always accessible and always available. I work for the, when I'm elected, I work for the people of Slidell. It's not about me. They say uh, what you do for yourself only lasts for an instance, but what you do for others lasts for, for decades ago. And that's gonna be my goal, to help the people of Slidell move into the next decade. <clears throat> I want to give back to the great citizens of Slide Out. I will dedicate half of my first year salary to four scholarship funds to the four local high schools here in Slide Out and Bridges and Bridges of Bible College in New Orleans. So that's going to be a total of five. I'm the best candidate for the job because of the new and innovative ideas I'm going to bring to the city of Slide Out by uh, working with the Department of Transportation, having uh, access signs at all seven interstates to direct people to Old Town. Uh, antique and historic district. There's over 25 million cars. Time's up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to, to, to direct them to Old Town to, to, to uh, you know, if just one percent of those people come and shop in Slidell, that's 2,500 extra people a year we have on the tax base in Slidell. Thank you so much. I appreciate your vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Miss Leslie Denham. Good evening, I'm Leslie Denham. I'm the current Councilwoman for District A. And of course, I'd like to thank the Chamber for having us here tonight. I'm a fourth generation Slidellian. I'm married to Dwight Denham, sitting in the back. I have a daughter, Elena, and two beautiful grandchildren, Slade and Elena. I'm a retired educator from Orleans Parish School System. And currently, my husband and I own Slidell Adult Day Health Care where I have served as the director for the past 17 years. Last year, I was honored to be chosen by my colleagues to serve as president of the city council, a position that I proudly still hold. This placement was undoubtedly due to my hard work and my commitment to the administration, the city of Slidell, and the residents of District A. When I ran for this seat four years ago, I promised if I were elected, I'd be effective and caring. Listen, learn, lead has been my motto. Day one on this job, I listened to the concerns of my constituents. I learned what was needed to get things done on the state, parish, and local level. And ultimately, I have earned the respect of my constituents and colleagues and was chosen to lead. I have committed myself to serve the city to the best of my ability, but my number one priority has been to the citizens of Slidell and the residents of District A. I have always addressed your concerns promptly, and I will continue to do so. I have the endorsement of the Alliance for Good Government, BPEC, and my mama. I still care. Thank you, and good night. Next up uh, is going to be the candidates for District C. That's Miss Megan Haggerty and Miss Nancy Nelson, and I think they're both coming up. So going alphabetically, we will have a two-minute statement from Miss Megan Haggerty. Thank you, Andy. Uh, good evening. First, I would like to say thank you to the St. Tammany Chamber of Commerce for allowing each candidate to express their vision for Slidell. My name is Megan Haggerty, and I would be honored to represent District C for our city council. I am a lifelong resident of Slidell. I received a bachelor's degree in political science and a master's degree in communications. But my passion and political calling started quite some time before college. When I was eight, I decided our neighborhood green space needed to become a park. I went door to door asking for signatures to support my petition. Even though I did have a lot of support, I was unfortunately unsuccessful and the land was developed into homes. 
but I knew then that I wanted to make a difference in staying up for my community and their needs. Slidell is at a pivotal point with an anticipated 6% growth in the next decade that is twice the national average. The right leadership and positive economic development will be detrimental to our future. Economic development that preserves the character and the charm of Slidell while bringing new, higher paying jobs to the area. Other important issues, drainage. A large part of District C expresses concerns over standing water that doesn't effectively drain into the drainage canal. Traffic. It is unacceptable that children in our neighborhoods are unable to walk to and from their neighborhood schools because of the traffic and people who don't observe the stop signs. Abandoned property. We should offer incentives for businesses to rehabilitate and utilize empty properties instead of building new ones. In infrastructure, having top-notch infrastructure increases productivity by enabling businesses to operate as efficiently as possible. It is about supporting the right change and standing up for the city and the constituents you represent. Seidel has so much to offer and I want to help it reach its maximum potential through economic development, improved infrastructure, and beautification projects. Thank you. Good evening and thank you to the Chamber for hosting the, tonight's uh, forum. I'm Nancy Nelson and I'm running for Slidell City Council District C. I'm a native of Slidell. I graduated from Slidell High School in LSU. I married my husband here and I raised my son here. I've been a resident of District C for almost 30 years and active in the district for just as long. As a former ad rep for the local newspaper, I helped numerous small businesses in Slidell launch and grow. As an assistant director of Council on Aging, I worked to ensure the needs of our seniors were being met on a daily basis. And now with the school board, I work daily with students, probably some of them are yours. I've served this community for many years and I look forward to continuing that service as a member of the City Council for District C. But what makes me the better candidate? My opponent spent almost a year promoting a casino that would have had devastating impacts to this entire area, just as it had done in its previous locations. Now, she says, in the end she realized her mistake and voted against it, but the damage was done. This community was forced to spend almost $2 million fighting the bad idea. It took her a year to see what most of us saw early on with a five minute Google search. District C doesn't have an extra $2 million lying around to fight her next bad idea. The bottom line is District C cannot afford Megan Haggerty. And that's how I am asking for your vote on March 26. Thank you. All right, so we got the group up here and uh, Four candidates for District D, and we will get two-minute statements from each of them, and we will start with Mr. Mark Choppy. Tell me how to say Domer. Lights out, right? There we go. Anyway, my name is Mark Domer, uh, Choppy, if you will, and um, I'm running for City Council District D. Um, I moved here in 1976. I was a Navy brat for a short period of time and uh, enrolled at Abney Elementary in the third grade. Completed that, moved on to St. Tammany Junior High, graduated from Salmon High, 1986. So I basically spent most of my younger years on the south side of Slidell, which I'm trying to represent. And um, after that, well, in, my, in my senior year, I actually joined the National Guard halfway through my senior year, took off the boot camp for um, the whole summer, part of the next semester, the following semester, I enrolled in Southeastern and started attending school there. Graduated in 1991 with a BS in criminal justice. Um, I worked my way through school, didn't take any loans out, got out of there debt free, if you can believe that. I know it doesn't happen anymore. But once I graduated, you know, I, I, I kept working and my work took me to, to San Diego for a few years. I was there for five years and something kept calling me back home. And what was calling me home was Slidell, because it was truly my home. So I came back here, went to work for a guy that I know, um, and was fortunate enough to start a business with my best friend, who I met at St. Tammany Junior High. And him and I, uh, we've been business partners since 2001. 
Uh, we currently have a, a third business partner that we merged two companies together. And we're actually investing back in our city by building our new shop within the city limits of Slidell in District C. And uh, I saw um, uh, Councilman Borchard speaking the other night, and he mentioned some pre-construction meetings that uh, would have been really helpful for us had we known about it before we started building our building, something I'd like to see um, more advertised for people who are just getting started building their first project. As far as what I'd like to do for the city, you know, I'm not here to reinvent the wheel. I want to maintain the, the current city projects and help to maybe give some new insight on things. <laughs> wow, time. Anyway. Mr. DeSanti. Well, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nick DeSanti, and I'm running for Slidell City Council District D. I served my last two uh, communities for over a decade as an HOA president, volunteering thousands of hours of my time. I'm a 15-year business owner. I want to thank all of our elected officials for some of the great things they're doing for Slidell. We have exciting things happening. The Slidell 2040 Comprehensive Plan, the Downtown Development Plan for Old Town, decreasing crime year over year since 2018, a $5 million budget surplus last year, at-risk homes continuing to be elevated, there's plans to, in place to improve our airport, renovate our parks, and even build pickleball courts. These are positive and exciting things for Slidell. One of the exciting things also is that there's, there's still, still so much work to do and so much opportunity to be taken advantage of. Let's work on a more proactive approach to code enforcement so we can maintain the standards of our neighborhoods, increase property values, and improve quality of life. Let's be aggressive with our approach to litter abatement. Let's find creative ways to attract local businesses. Let's explore possibilities to develop our coastline, one of our greatest assets. Let's reroute the St. Tammany Trace to utilize the existing train rails so Slidell can have as high quality a trace experience as every other city in the parish. As your Slidell Councilman in District D, I am committed to working closely with everyone at Team Slidell to keep present projects moving forward and introduce new projects that will prov provide value and quality of life for our citizens. In closing, I want to thank all of you who have invested in Slidell, all of you who have committed to this great city, those of you who raise your families here and pursue your dreams here. Government is not easy. It takes time and patience, but we are making progress. There was a dream that was Slidell, Louisiana, and that dream will be realized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeSanti. Uh, moving on to Mr. Sean Morris. Now, before I begin, I want, I want to ask a simple question. How many folks here in this room, in, in the chairs, live in District D? All right, we got some. What's your name, ma'am? Jean Glover. Jean Glover, what, what neighborhood are you in? I'm in Carolyn Park. Carolyn Park, fantastic. I used to live in West Hall. Someone back there, oh, the, 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 the Shamale, very good. So, let me introduce myself to you. <laughs> You're the only ones voting up here. My name is Sean Morrison, and I want to run for city council. Because ultimately, Slidell is a great place to live and work. We're not really a city or a suburb. Ultimately, we're, we're still a community, right? I'm raising two small kids here, and I want to make sure, though, that when they grow up, they can stay here because it's still a great community. To do that, we need to start thinking about some big things. When you think about the economy as more than just more retail, we should be investing in a small business incentive program so we can build a stronger, healthier, more diversified economy. When you think about the water issues as more than just more pumps and drains, but as a West Slidell levy system, they can keep the water out of our streets and our homes. And these are big projects. You need someone with the experience to do big things. So I can offer you about a decade of experience as a state level assistant attorney general, working with federal and state agencies on big projects with big budgets that help a lot of people. 
And I can offer you about a decade of experience as a small business attorney, helping companies get started, hire their employees, and grow and succeed. I've worked in both the private and the public sectors, and I see how we can work together to keep Sidel a great community. So if you would agree, then I'm going to ask for your vote. And Gene, I'm asking for your vote. And back there, Sean Lay, I'm asking for your vote on March 26th. My name is Sean Morrison, and I want to put Slide Out back to work for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. And now we'll hear from Miss Bonnie Vanny. Uh, I'm Bonnie Vanny. I'm running for council in District D. It consists of Delwood, Lakeshore Village, Yester Oaks, Palm Lake, Shama Lake, Hermondale, Carolyn Park, the North Shore Mall, and Slide Out Airport. Uh, I've lived in Slidell since 1970. I've been president of the Homeowners Association in Delwood since 1997 when I started the organization. I am and was a past business owner of Vanny's Marine Hardware and Sporting Goods, Vanny's Seafood, V&A Homes, and Vanny's Consulting. I am creator and curator of the Mardi Gras Museum for the city of Slidell. With the many subdivisions in the district, there are a variety of problems that occurred. Just recently, the city spent $450,000 of FEMA money to correct infrastructure problems left by Hurricane Katrina. That included surge, drainage, and street repairs. Flood insurance is a great concern in our district. I will work to make sure the proper paperwork is filed by the city to improve our rating. This will help lower our rates. I will work to have the remaining portion of Tammany Trace go down the old railroad line and to not to disturb the quality of life of the people in Carrollton Park. My main goal is to encourage economic development in our district, increase the size of the airport, and develop it, and developing the Port of Slidell into a produc production facility that will bring high paying jobs to our area. I will work toward filling our vacant building, commercial buildings that are in the district. But most of all, I work for the people of the district. I respectfully ask for your vote May 26th, March 26th, sorry. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> March 26th. And if there's a runoff, April 30th. And that concludes our statements from the candidates from District D. Thank you all. Last but not least, District F candidates. There are two that are running. That's Mr. Trey Brownfield, who is joining us on the stage right now, and Ms. Kim Harbison, who I'm told had a family emergency and won't be able to join us this evening. So, uh, Mr. Brownfield, I, I think we can probably come or meet in the middle. You can give you three minutes. Does that sound right, since we have four minutes to go? You never want to give me more time when I'm talking, okay? You, you got three I'll minutes. I'll take it all. Okay, no. Uh, I'm Trey Brownfield. I'm going to ask a similar question like Sean Morrison. How many people live in District F? I didn't think so because I've knocked most of the doors in the district. But nobody li here tonight lives in District F, and that's okay. Because when elected as a city councilman, I make decisions for all. But you might know somebody in the district tonight. Um, I'm married. My wife, uh, Gabby, was here earlier, but our little daughter, Bristol, was getting rambunctious. She had to leave. But uh, we've lived here in the district for, well, since 2014. I'm a small business owner. I'm the general manager of North Shore Ace Hardware on Robert Road. And also a uh, commercial landowner here in Slidell and uh, investment properties in Picayune. So I do a lot. I'm, like I said, 31 years old. I sit on six nonprofits here in the community. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving this here tonight to go to Menesteel, which is an organization I'm a founding member of, where we raise about tonight, hopefully $10,000 for local nonprofit. Um, I sit as an advisory member for Old Town Main Street. Anyway, don't want to bore you. What's important though tonight is that we do seek the police funding for our community. As stated before, we have rising crime coming out of New Orleans, East, West, all those directions that, that the chief listed. And we need to make sure that our police department has the funding to train, retain, and hire the people that are needed. He needs a new building. We need to make sure that we get the funding to help build that building. For my district, flooding is a big issue. We have Wimbledon where people 
houses are having to get raised. We have the W14 Canal where we have people's backyards being eroded by it. And we also have uh, some parks in our neighborhood that need to be uh, upgraded. So those are my vision, to grow the parks, to invest in each and every one of them in the community, to reduce the flooding and the erosion problems in these people's backyards, and to make sure that the police have the funding that they need. But like I said, when I make a decision on the council, I'm going to represent all. So I ask that tonight, if you know somebody in District F, reach out to them and say, hey, call up this guy Trey Brownfield. I'm probably one of the most accessible people there are. I have door hangers. I have uh, my phone number on my Facebook page. I have them on my door hangers, everything. Take one, tell somebody about it. I'd appreciate you. Thank the chamber again for tonight for hosting us. May God bless you and may God bless our city. Okay, I think that's going to do it. And I am now going to call up Mr. Colin Shea for some closing remarks. If I could give 15 seconds of my own opinion. We're entitled to numerous rights by our Constitution. To me, the most important one is the right to vote. The right to vote gives you the opportunity to be able to worship as you please, the freedom of press, the freedom of speech. If you have friends in your district, encourage them to vote. The numbers are low. Civic involvement, getting a community to be stronger begins at the ballot box. Whoever you vote for, but vote, please. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you again, Andy, for moderating tonight and for those remarks. It certainly is the case. Uh, one thing I thought about during this was I've heard a lot of cities saying they want to be like Mayberry, so I'm wondering maybe if she keep the jail cells like that. <laughs> Just a thought. But um, guys, like we said, part of the chamber's mission is to educate voters before they go to the polls. Early voting next week with the election on the 26th. The chamber PAC met with each of these candidates before, or met each of the citywide candidates, the council at large seats and the chief of police before this election, and they have endorsed Chief Fandel for the police chief, Mr. Burchard, and Mr. Um, Mr. Glenn. So, so I want to say P. P Sean. So I want to say P. Shu. I know a P. Shu. I apologize. But Mr. P. Sean, Mr. Burchard, and Mr. Fandel with the Chamber PAC's endorsement on the citywide races. Again, thank you all for coming out. And to kind of echo what Andy said, the biggest thing we can do is vote. We appreciate your insight. And for any of the candidates that are running, we know there's only certain number of seats that will be elected, but those that are running that care enough for the city, you caring enough for the city, our parish, because as we can see in the world right now, democracy is fragile. And what you're doing right now to serve, give your opinion is valued. And the chamber supports that. Thank you all for coming. Have a great night.